Hey, thanks for tuning in to another interview on Overcomers TV Live, answering the call. We're super excited to be in Colorado Springs today, visiting the Colorado Springs Christian School with me, Dr. Dorenzo. Right. I'd love to start with your faith journey. Talk a little bit about how God put you in the saddle over here at Colorado Springs Christian School. Well, I'll give you the Reader's Digest version. Yeah, How's yeah. that? Sounds good. So I, was, I accepted the Lord at five. My dad was a bivocational pastor, and so yeah. he... Um, was preaching one Sunday and I was ready to go forward and I thought when do I get to go forward my mom says well wait till the end of the service and they were on at the song service right. so I waited at the end of the song service I started going forward she goes no 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 you gotta wait so yeah. he preached I went forward and so I had the privilege of accepting the Lord and having my dad lead me to to my salvation experience yeah. that was at the age right. of five yeah but I really didn't see the, the reality of that salvation experience until 1975. And so um, it was a time when my wife and I both, uh, we had just been married two years and the Lord had just really been working on us about ministry. I had continued to refuse to do ministry. I wanted to be a professional baseball player. And so I continued to pursue that yeah. dream, which was not his dream. God's favorite sport, by the way, baseball. <laughs> in the big inning, yeah, God I, created I the heavens and the earth, absolutely. right? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. He, that's good. So um, it was really in 1975 yeah. that it became real, and, and really the, the struggle ended where it wasn't my way anymore, it was his yeah, way. Right. Um, and then we ended, entered into the ministry in 1978, uh, yeah. my first year at uh, Plymouth Christian Academy in, uh, in Michigan, Canton, Michigan. And I started as a PE teacher and ended up uh, the last five years as senior pastor of the church. It was a church-sponsored school. Right. And then in 2000, the Lord called me out here to CSCS. And we've been here for 24 years and I just love every minute of it. Yeah, that's good. A little follow-up on the baseball joke, too. You know, <laughs> there's more proof. It's all in the Bible. You know, um, they say uh, Eve stole first, Adam stole second. Um, Cain struck out Abel, yep. <laughs> the, the giants got rained out, and then the prodigal son came home. That all sounds like it's, baseball. I mean, you're a baseball guy, right? Absolutely. You know, and this is a Christian school. It's important that they have a good Christian doctrinal education Foundation, and understand that right. baseball is first place. Exactly. That's good. Exactly. That's good. So let's talk a little bit about your role, your involvement here in the ministry okay. now. Well, as superintendent, I have the opportunity to cast the vision and the direction. Uh, you know, we believe in excellent education, but for us, that's not just knowledge based, it's experientially based. It is transformational, and it's not just something that is rote that we want our kids to be able to recite. We want them to be able to live. I think the, the bottom line to being in Christian education is we get a chance to model that and we get to see the passion and the joy of following Christ. Yeah. And I, I think that's sometimes what is kind of uh, almost a minor key in, in the concert of Christian education. And for us, we want that grace and that redemption to be part of really the holistic person. Yeah. And so we get that opportunity, the holistic person, everything, body, soul, spirit, right. where uh, public schools and, and private schools, they, they have to be careful with that. Right. We're not careful with that. Right, right. We let the Holy Spirit lead and we watch transformation take place. That's what excites us. Yeah, and I know every ministry has a vision statement, mission statement. If you're watching online, it's right there from the website. But I always like to ask people, how do you describe the heartbeat of the ministry? I call it the, the center, our, our mission statement, excellent education, Christ-centered right. perspective, lifelong service. Yeah. The fulcrum of that is Christ-centeredness. Yeah. So for us, it's the joy of being a Jesus follower. Yeah. And we want our kids to see that. So our staff every day, it's, it's not easy to be an educator, yeah. right? Yeah. It's tough. Yeah, that's a mission field too, it, for it sure. Is, it, it is, and in the culture that right. we have today, it's difficult. But God transforms people right. to walk in a way that's worthy of the manner of calling that he's placed on the life. That's who serves here. Yeah. And we want our kids to see it Right. We want to model it and then mentor it. And right. that's really kind of the thrust of, of CSCS. Yeah, I know Deuteronomy 6, 6 through 9 is a key passage yeah. of, you know, Moses telling his folks, you know, the, this law, this word will be on your heart and you should diligently teach them to your children, to your right. grandchildren, when you lie down, when you walk by the way. 
And as you know, teachers and a school, you're partnering with parents, sure. right? Yes. So what the you know, family and mom and dad are trying to um, instill in their children all day long, all week long, all year long in their home lines up with what they're hearing in the classroom. Talk about how important that is. Well, if you don't have it lined up, it becomes then not a complementary relationship, but a conflict relationship. Because what they're hearing at home, they're going to hear something different at school. And now you've placed that student in conflict. What we want is to put them in a complementary position. You're hearing it from home, you're hearing it from school, but now here comes the key. You're seeing it lived out. And right. that's really where I think the secret, I call it the secret sauce of Christian education. Right. It's living it out, being joyful, yeah. being passionate, and knowing that Jesus is in control and we're not here to determine our lives. Yeah. You know, we hear that from our culture. Right. We're here to discover our lives because he's already planned that life. Right. It's a calling. It's a calling. God has a calling on each Amen. person. It's clear in scripture when we look at that, even Jeremiah chapter 1, yep. verse 5. A lot of pro-life ministries use that as a yep. key verse because yep. there he's told Jeremiah, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. That's right. So God knew this person before conception even. And he told Jeremiah, I ordained you and sanctified you to be a prophet to the nation. So yes. that's a purpose, that's a plan for each life, right. you know, from the womb to the tomb, so that's they right. say. Yes. And part of your job is equipping them, empowering them to discover their calling, but also be equipped and be ready for that. I mean, I love your testimony, you know, getting saved at the age of five. I always say that's like preventative grace. <laughs> you know, um, you probably saved or were saved from a lot of different train wrecks. Yes. And yeah. not that we all have a perfect testimony, right. but um, train up a child in the way they should go in the admonition of the Lord so when they're older, they don't depart. You must talk about that a lot around here. Well, absolutely. <clears throat> and, and the training piece has to be done more than just with knowledge. Right? Knowledge without wisdom is sterile. Mm. But wisdom is what teaches the application. And so our, our job is not to conform them, but to show the direction. Yeah. And once you have that, you're on that pathway, then it's the work of the Holy Spirit to guide, to instruct, to encourage. So we bring all that to them, but it's really through the modeling of our lives. And yeah. then, yes, we impart the, the knowledge, the education. And then the parents come along and really what they do is they wrap it all up because they know that student better than we do. And when you have both of those working in tandem, you have the opportunity for, for greatness to come out of that life. And obviously to honor and glorify Christ. That's what we're here for. Yeah, that's good. That's really good. Well, stay tuned. We're going to get some more interviews from some parents, some staff, faculty, maybe even uh, just some folks that are supporting this ministry so you two can hear a little bit more about how God is using Colorado Springs Christian School to make disciples and disciple makers. Keep watching. Tune in to Overcomers TV on your favorite app or streaming platform. It's time to overcome. Well, thanks for continuing to watch this episode of Answering the Call. Pastor Chuck Reesh with uh, Dr. Roland Dorenzo here at Colorado Springs Christian School. I love to talk about evangelism, preach the gospel to every living creature. I'm sure, you know, K through 12, you're not expecting kindergartners to go out on the, to share the gospel yet, but maybe the high schoolers are doing mm -hmm. some trips. Um, talk about how God is using this ministry to even be a witness here and, you know, around the world to share the gospel. Well, I, you know, for us, a lot of, I'll, I'll start with high school because high school, they go on trips, athletics, um, our fine arts, um, Last year, uh, our band, two years ago, went on a trip. This was, you know, we're trying to do the, we're, we're the post-COVID, you know, so I'll have to take you to pre-COVID. Right. Um, and they would take their band trips, and they would go out to uh, Disneyland out in California. They, it, it's a national competition. Uh, we'd always come back with first place. Thought I would just Praise put the Lord. that in. God is uh, good. Have an excellent fine arts because, yeah. personally, my philosophy is that you should not give up something to come to Christian school. Yeah. You should get something in addition right. to what's out there. So yeah. great academics, great athletics. Right. Uh, in fact, our, our gals right now, our girls basketball team is playing in the state tournament. Uh, they have their first state tournament game this Thursday. Uh, they are defending champions. We believe that's important. Great sports program, great fine arts. Yeah. 
And then you get the Christ-centeredness that wraps that all together. So that's kind of why right. we believe it's so important and what we try to build here. That's you don't holi- give it's up It's a holistic something. education. It's the holistic yeah, education. That's good. So when they travel, yeah. they travel to represent Christ. Yeah. They're not just representing CSCS. Right. They represent Jesus Christ. And so they're out in California. The hotel says you can come back any time you want uh, because yeah. your kids leave it cleaner than right. what they even received. Right. That's a testimony. That's a witness. That's a sure. witness yeah. right there without even saying a word. Oh, yeah. So that happens good. over and over and over, right. whether it's fine arts, athletics, uh, mission trips, whatever it is. So our job is to impact the world, and you do that through relationship. Right. right. And, you know, a lot of kids uh, grow up hearing because the Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says, and the Bible does say, and, you know, the word is the word, and it's written on our hearts, like Paul, you know, not Paul, but David would say, mm-hmm. you know, I've written your heart, word on my heart so I might not sin against you, and, and that's good. But, yeah, Jesus said, let your light so shine before man that they see your good works or deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So yes. that's a great testimony that even as they go and competing in different venues that they're shining their light. Yeah. Well, in the, the last year in the state tournament, after each game, they would circle up private, public school. They join hands, and they yeah. the, the t- team players would all pray, yeah. and in that game in prayer. And I'm thinking, what a beautiful picture! You know, here they've competed, right. and competed at high level, right. and now what do they do? The capstone is right. we give honor and glory to Christ. Right. So again whether it's athletics, whether it's the Bible class. What I don't want is our kids to see it as an add-on. Yeah. We want to see it as integration. Right. It's DNA it's, stuff. It's, it is. And then it comes out yeah. in body life. Yeah, we live and, it out. Exactly. That's good. And again, uh, this is because we have the cameras, we've been here. I love to just talk about everything and everything. So I know we're <laughs> okay. trying to you know, create a good promotional video for the school. but. Not too long ago, there was a coach who got in trouble for just praying on the field yeah. after a game. Yeah. So, you know, working with a lot of Christian educators, obviously every parent, you know, they sign their statement of faith. They right. know that you're working from a Christian perspective. But right. do you want to talk a little bit about what you see happening in the world, the polar opposites from, you know, maybe public education versus a Christian education? Well, I, I think the, the, the best way to sum it up is when you and I were growing up, it was true education. It's now turned into indoctrination. And you have to look at what are they indoctrinating our young people and our children with. It's polar opposite of what we have. Because see, we come and start with a foundational aspect of there's an absolute truth. And everything is built on that absolute truth. So there is foundation that can erode. And then you build the life from there. Out in the world today, it is everybody, it's a free for all. You decide what you want truth to be. And so the result of that, and if you follow scripture, it's chaos, always chaos. And it is always defeat at some point. So we want our kids to know the difference. You need to be exposed to both so that you know the truth. And then as John says, the truth will set you free. And I want you to live in freedom. I don't, you know, we're not living in bondage. We are living in freedom but that is because of the transformation of the heart. So we start at the heart, and then what happens when a transformed heart illuminates the mind, people understand what the act of service is all about. So that's kind of our mantra here. Yeah, and um, you know, we have a couple different shows on our network, um, Sexual Redemption, Choose Life, and again, the issues of the day, like even the woke kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, In some schools, again, they're Pronouns are, you know, it's just, I, I, I'm almost beside myself thinking that, you know, we have, while they're in a classroom setting, they could be encouraged to, again, we're talking about basic truths here. Yeah. You know, when a baby's born, it, yeah. is it a boy or a girl? It's the first question asked. You know, yeah. we got a boy, we got a girl. And we celebrate that, you know. That's and, right. um, you know, Titus talks about that. And Timothy, you know, older women training younger women, uh, men teaching younger men. Right. You know, it's, these are, these are like, These are non-negotiables. Right. So um, it's scary what's happening um, in some of those other circles. Is it demonic? I mean, I mean, obviously, you know, the prince of the power of the air. It's it's everything spiritual. It's spiritual battle, right? So it is. And uh, but everything starts with language. mm -hmm. And so you've seen the language Mm -hmm. change over time. What we would use words for to connote a meaning 
is no longer that same meaning today. Right. For instance, when, when babies are born, their gender is determined, right. not decided. Right. And so Satan comes along and says, we're going to remove determined and we're going to slip in decided. And right there from that moment, the message is you have the control then to yeah. decide. No, right. you don't have that control. Right. It's right. been determined. Right. So again, without God, what happens? Everything turns to chaos. Right. Right. And man then becomes vi really um, a perpetrator of evil right. because Satan is in control to a certain extent. Right. That's where we live above. Right. But you've got to have that transformation yeah. in order to take place. That's good. And again, John 14, 6, anybody who's been a Christian long mm -hmm. enough, the Gospel of John is just great. Yeah. Chapter 14, where Jesus, after he says, you know, let not your heart be troubled, mm -hmm. um, depression, anxiety, teenagers. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's a tougher world they're living in now. They're being subjected to a lot. And he says, believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. I'm going to prepare a place for you. That's the promise, the gospel of heaven. Exactly. And he says, I'm going to show you the way, or you know the way. And they're like, well, show us the way. And verse 6, I am the way. Yeah. I am the truth. Yes. I am the life. Yeah. And in one of my interviews, I've heard it said, he's not like, I'm going to give you some truth. I'm <laughs> going to show you a way. Right. He's I am those things. Yes. So again, talking about Christ-centered, we keep our eyes on Jesus, yeah. the author and the finisher of our faith, right? Yeah, and, and I think the, the big thing that people sometimes miss is this is the work of the Holy Spirit. Right. And that sanctification that takes place is, is a, allows you to walk in a different manner, even with right. everything around you seeming like it's stacked against you. Right. You know, you have the, the authority that's been placed in you. And, and our kids today, are, they're under great assault, not only from the woke uh, culture that we live in, but social media has changed the dynamic for, mm -hmm. for our kids. You know, when I was growing up, yeah. we didn't have cell phones. Right. Sorry, we didn't have a lot of things. Right. And so we had to use our imagination much more than what I see today. It's right. one of the things that I think the, the, the technology has stolen from, from our, our kids as they develop is they don't know how to use that imagination. And quite frankly, that innovation and imagination is what you need in order to conquer problems. Yeah. You've got to be innovative. You've got to be imaginative. And so I think sometimes we, try, we, we don't want to create old school mentality, right. but we do want them to understand that the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. is not bound by social media. Right. Yeah. He can transcend anything that's at true. any time. And that's really our message here. Why does Christian education matter? Because you have absolute truth, you have the work of the Holy Spirit, yeah. you have the opportunity to see transformation, and you get the complementary relationship between the home and the school. Yeah. And so with all of those working together, then that heart may be open for the Lord to do what He can only do. Amen. And that's, yeah. that's what CSCS is about. That's awesome. That is so good. That is so good. Stay tuned. We're going to talk a little bit more to some of the staff, faculty, some parents about how God is using Colorado Springs Christian School to help share the gospel. Mm. Keep watching. Tune in to Overcomers TV on your favorite app or streaming platform. It's time to overcome. Well, thanks for continuing to watch this episode of Answering the Call. I'm Pastor Chuck Reesh, show host, executive producer here in Colorado Springs, visiting Colorado Springs Christian School with me, Dr. Roland Dorenzo. So discipleship, again, a big church word. Um, the Great Commission, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, mm -hmm. baptizing them and then teaching them to obey all that I've commanded you. Right. So I'm sure you take discipleship pretty serious around here. How do you, you're making little disciples, right? Yeah, exactly, but every day, yeah. every day. And for, for me, I use the word mentorship. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to mentor, you want to walk alongside. In athletics, we call it coaching, mm -hmm. right? You coach someone and you allow them to try it and, and even fail. And then how do you, how do you respond from failure? It's one of the things in our culture that has basically been obliterated, mm -hmm. is how do you fail forward? How do you learn from failure? Well, you don't do that without a mentor. Right. You know, I mean, look at the 12 disciples. They screwed up all the time. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. And so, but what did God, what did he do? Jesus came in and he taught. 
you know, when they, he sent them out and they were casting out demons and they thought they were something big, right? Yeah, and then excited. all of a sudden, they can't cast out demons. Yeah. And they come back and the coach says, here's why. Yeah. He's walking with them. He's teaching them. Yeah. He's talking with them. He's living with them. And all of a sudden, there is this awakening. It's a wake-up call for them. Well, that's the model we try to employ here. It isn't, hey, we want you to do these things and we're going to restrict things by rules. We're not going to do that. We're going to live that freedom in relationship. Now, there's boundaries right. that come, but that's where the mentorship helps understand the boundaries so you can right. walk freely and not worry about, am I going to the left or to the right? And to right. me, that's discipleship, but it's, it's built day upon day. It's built in relationship. It's not yeah. just in rhetoric. We're so good in the Christian community with rhetoric. Yeah. We all know the verses. We all know the talk. Right, right. We can use the language, yeah. but where's the life? Yeah. So we want it to be life-giving in our discipleship here. And, and so that happens in the classroom. I mean, the heroes here, I'll be honest with you, they're in the classroom. Yeah, the teachers. The day-to-day. Yeah. -day, yeah. They see it, and they get to see the teacher right. every day. Because not every day is a great day. Oh, right. Not every yeah, teacher is no. having a great day, right? That's true. But you get to see what humanity really is and how God can come in and intersect that humanity. Yeah. That's what they need to see. That's discipleship. Yeah. Because our job, they leave us. They leave their home, but they never leave God and the work yeah. of the Holy Spirit. Right. That's our goal, that's yeah. our mission. And yeah. to me, that's discipleship. And I love that about Jesus. He says, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. And you're right, he's, yeah. as you're going, he's going with you. And even at the end of that great commission, he says, lo, I'm with you even to the end In of the, the ages. Earth. Amen. So, you know, you're not doing it alone. And I love how, you know, you, you talk about the realness yeah. in, in the classroom. And again, we are real people. Yeah. Um, some people say, you know, you don't want to be so, Heavenly minded, you know, earthly good. That's right. You know, our feet are on the ground. This is a, an imperfect world we live in. And, you know, our goal, Jesus sets the bar high. But, yes. you know, living it out and uh, in every area. And, of course, I'm sure these students, too, they come to school with some issues. They're going Absolutely. through some stuff. And they, some may or may not be able to talk to their mom and dad about it. Yeah. So I love the coaching, the mentoring aspect of discipleship. That's, you know, Paul poured into Timothy. So... Yeah. Um, it's more than just, you know, a classroom setting and, yeah. and a academia. I mean, there's really relationship. You want to talk about the exactly. relationships that are formed? Yeah, and I think really for me, I always say, if you're going to look at discipleship in a relational context, then you need a Barnabas, a Paul, and a Timothy in your life, yeah. right? right? You need the encourager, yeah. right? That's sometimes the teacher. Right. You need the, uh, the Paul, the, in, the instruction, Right. right? That's the teacher. But you also need the Timothy so that you are able to pour into someone else. Right. That's what I call ping pong discipleship, yeah. right? It just starts flowing. Yeah. And, and that to me is more real right. than to have them sit in a class and give them all of the, you know, this is the law, this is, this is the rule, this is the theology. Yes, theology is important, but it's not yeah. important if it's not able to be translated into right. a life work right. and into life action. Yeah. And so that's, to me, the vibrancy of discipleship. Right. And, and again, it's the teachers. I mean, they are the heroes. Yeah. They model that. They're right. there day in, day out. That's and the kids build that trust. If you don't have security and you don't have trust, you'll never see learning take place. Right. So that's what we try to emphasize with our teachers build that relationship out of trust right. and out of that security and yeah. then they're willing to risk and to learn and to me that's part of discipleship as well that's good what year did you guys start in 1971 71 so by now you've got some students all over yes yeah you all sent over the them world. out if you will all so, over the world um you know we could probably do multi-segments or uh documentaries on where are they now right <laughs> how god has raised them up and sent them out and and that's what he does. He sends yes. them up and sends them out. Yep. Do you guys stay in touch with some of the alumni as well? We do. We do. And in fact, we are an advancement office now. That's what we really focus on is where are they? What are they doing? And then have them. With technology now, it's easy to reach them. Yeah. Um, and so it's very important to see what they're doing and to know that, yes, you're pouring into lives, but the results 
they're not up to you. Yeah. And yeah, I don't, I don't, I can't tell you how freeing that is. Yeah. Right. To know, be faithful. Right. But don't try to determine yeah. the outcome. Manage your expectations too. I might yeah. say because, again, sometimes we were talking on the way in. I'm an idealist and I expect everything <laughs> to go perfect. Yeah, and God sure. reminds me, you know, there's still. I don't free know anything about choice. that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's good. So, and I'm sure they get an opportunity to speak to students on a, on a regular basis. And not everybody goes into full-time ministry. Again, right. Marketplace is ministry. Do you want to mention that? Yeah, well, actually, uh, Danny Ortley was just here, did a chapel for us. Danny is, a, you know, Christian uh, musician, composer, um, has a tremendous life story himself. Um, and so we love to bring them back. And, I mean, he's been out of school now, what, close to 25 years? Um, still vibrant for Jesus yeah. and it's like man that's what I want our kids to see yeah. you know this is what God gave him to do right. this was the gifting he put on him that's and good. so yeah we try to bring our, our alum back um, but not to preach at our kids I want them to see what right. God is doing and taking them to right. whatever the field is whatever right. the profession is right. they're living Jesus there yeah. and that's we're good. preparing you to follow in that pathway. Yeah. And that's a beautiful thing. Exciting, for sure. It no is, doubt. absolutely. That's good. Well, stay tuned. We're going to talk a little bit more about discipleship with some of the faculty, some of the staff, even some of the supporters here at Colorado Springs Christian School. Keep watching. Tune in to Overcomers TV on your favorite app or streaming platform. It's time to overcome. Thanks for continuing to watch this episode of Answering a Call. We're hoping by now you're feeling a little nudge in the Holy Spirit to see that God is still working all around the world. He's working here. He's working in your life. And there's a part for us to be playing, to even be praying for one another. So, Dr. Roland Dorenzo, you know, you're the superintendent, CEO over a K-12 school. You know, there's tuition involved, but certainly that doesn't cover everything. So, I believe Christian education needs to be supported. I don't want to sing your song here, yeah. but talk about ways people can come alongside and partner with you. Well, they can do that, first of all, by prayer support, because prayer moves mountains. Prayer is what is the heartbeat for us. Mm -hmm. So if you think about CSCS, pray for CSCS that will stand on the truth, that will stand yeah. firm, that will continue to move forward with the vision God has placed yeah. on our hearts and on the school in general. Secondly is obviously financial. Now, we, we have a very unique model. Uh, in 1971, our founders said, you can never charge the full cost mm -hmm. through tuition right. because they wanted it affordable, accessible to Christian right. families. Right. And so we have lived that for 53 years now that we do not charge the full cost. Right. So there's always a gap every year. Mm -hmm. Now, some of that comes through fundraising that we do, but a lot of it comes through partnerships, mm -hmm. partnerships with individuals, partnerships with foundations who will see the need, understand that if we're going to take this generation and see them unleashed into this culture, in this world, yeah. then it's going to be through the church right. first, right. always the church, and then through Christian education yeah. so that they're equipped, but that takes dollars. Right. And so we want to keep the tuition down. We're, you know, we're very affordable. When you look at schools our size, our tuition is a lot less and we offer a lot more, but we always have to fill that gap. So partners financially, uh, prayer partners, that leads to the heart. And you know, you give out of your heart. Yeah, you don't right. give out of compulsion. You don't right. give out of, out of any kind of vision. You give out of your heart. Yeah. And so if someone is connected to us through their heart, they're praying for us right. and God leads them to give, then know this, those dollars are going to change lives here. In fact, last week alone, we, I was told last night at the band concert, we have three middle schoolers that came to know Jesus this past last two weeks wow, through our chapels great. and through ministry of our teachers. Yeah. That's the exciting. Yeah. That's right. fantastic. That's the fruit. That's what it's about. Yeah. So if you want to partner to see that happen, there's yeah. three more lives that are going to be in the kingdom for eternity, right. but are going to do work here on this right. earth. And yeah. that's what gets me excited. That's awesome. Yeah, and, you know, God loves a cheerful giver, and, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of great causes and a lot of great ministries out there, but that's why we do this show. We try to raise awareness of the ministries that are on the front lines mm -hmm. doing what they're doing, and God, and like you mentioned, starts with prayer. As we pray about things, He encourages people what to do okay. with their time, with their treasure, exactly. and with their talents, and, you know, it's more blessed to give than to receive, and I'm sure even you hear back from donors and 
people who have sown good seed into Absolutely. this ministry and how they are blessed by that. Do you want to talk a little bit about well, that? Well, we just, it, it's so funny. This past fall, we had a couple that called us up out of the blue. They've never had their kids at the school. Mm -hmm. And so they called and said, hey, we want to come by and, and get to know the school a little bit. And so they did. And we met with them in my office and said, how, how did you know about us? And, and why are you interested in, in CSCS? And they said, well, we have neighbors and we've seen their two kids who went through the school and were so impressed. And we have been giving our dollars at the post-secondary level in college and university. Yeah. But we feel that's too late. Yeah. We think it needs to be K to 12. And yeah. so we're here today to scope out who you are, what yeah. you're doing. And it's like, man, the Holy Spirit brought these people. Right. over to the school no one solicited them right. nobody sent out any pamphlet to them right. and all of a sudden they want to partner with us yeah. and so they did and they they turned around the next week and wrote a very nice donation check to the school and said we'll be back next year yeah. so that those are the stories that encourage me because right. we know that's out of our hands right we have to be faithful god will provide the resource yeah amen and i appreciate our partnership as well as we mentioned earlier uh, my wife and I at Four Corners Home for Children, you know, we had over 2,000 children mm -hmm. come through in the 71 years, but we have our own little academy. Yeah. Nowhere at the scale you guys are at. We have K through eight, it's wonderful. you know, four or five, sometimes seven students, uh, Four Corners Academy for Excellence. That's awesome. So if your teachers want to come down and plug <laughs> in and, and work with us, but other, you know, Christian schools, we share notes, yes. you know, we learn from each other. There's right. good, there's better, yeah. there's best practices. Right. Um, there's curriculum, mm -hmm. there's obviously salaries for teachers, right. um, and you know, every, every ministry has a budget. Yes. So again, um, I appreciate you guys being good stewards over all that, and again, our partnership, and I don't want to underestimate the power of prayer, um, because it is a spiritual battle, yes. for sure. Yeah. Um, last question I want to ask is about teams. You have work teams, I mean, with a campus, there's probably always something to work on. I know you're working with kids, there has to be some background checks things of that nature, but how do you guys work with uh, teams that may want to come on campus and volunteer? Yeah, you know, we obviously, we encourage that. We have, we have a host of volunteers. We have an army of volunteers. The only way this ministry works is, yeah. and many of them are parents, some are alumni, some yeah. are just from the community, and so when they come, obviously, yes, there's background checks. You do all the due diligence because right. our number one safety is number one here, right. so we right. do that, but yeah, we have so many jobs so many opportunities uh, we have people coming in the classrooms helping kids with reading yeah. we have those who work with maintenance and and those who help with athletics yeah. athletics has an army just themselves of right. parents and and former uh, students I mean I have a host of alumni coaching for us here so it's a beautiful awesome. way for them to come back and give yeah. back to CSCS so if we didn't have the volunteers we could not pay for everything that goes on day to day here yeah. We're, we're heavily dependent on our volunteers. Yeah, that's awesome to see your time, your treasure, your talents all working together. Yeah. Not if everybody remembers the old phrase, uh, running on all eight cylinders. Yes. Back in the day, there was eight, yeah, a carburetor, and if one of the spark plugs yeah, exactly. wasn't firing, the car was running rough. But yeah, it takes a lot to make things yeah. smooth. And uh, I know you have an amazing team here. I do. Um, I love to always ask people while they're mic'd up and they're warmed up at this point, why do you do what you do? What gets you up in the morning? I just, I love leadership. I'm a student of leadership, and this is the best laboratory to develop leaders right here, servant leaders. Yeah. And that's missing in our world. There's a lot of leadership out there, but is there a lot of servant leadership? So every day, I love the fact that I get to come here and to help develop servant leaders. Yeah. I love that, and it keeps me passionate. I hope it keeps me young, yeah. but I'll tell you, I love that. And I do want to say, I have the best leadership team. I have the best leadership team. Nobody does this alone. Yeah. And, and I mean, you know, you look at the disciples and Jesus, you look at that model and you say, that's the kind of leadership team that I think can change the world. Right. I believe that. Yeah. Anybody's hanging out with me for five minutes realizes I'm a cliche guy. I love cliches. <laughs> they say a lot with a few words, right. but teamwork makes the dream work. Absolutely. You know, when I heard that and uh, the, it's that, the truth, that's true yeah. for sure. Um, final question, is there anything else the Lord put on your heart to share with us today before I ask you to lead our viewers in prayer? Well, I think the only thing is that we've got to start acting like we've won and quit walking in defeat. That's good. Walk in victory. We win. I've read the end of the book. We win. Yeah. So 
We got to live that way because our kids are getting so sidetracked with the lie. Yeah. And it's, it's a lie that's about defeatism. It's about death and destruction. That's what scripture says. Right. We want them to see the truth. Right. And the truth is the light. It's liberating. It's freedom. And so that's what I really, that's what gets me fired up. Let's get a generation fired up and let's see God do a revival yeah. through this next young generation. I think that would be such a capstone to everything yeah. we've been doing. And you and I think a lot alike, and that's why we're here today. We partnered to do this, mm -hmm. uh, allowing us to tell your story and interview some of your, can't interview everybody, but we're going to interview some of the superstars. You're going to love the people. You're going to love who yeah. you interview, trust me. But we launched the channel five years ago mm -hmm. uh, in 2019, launching 2020, right before COVID. Overcomers TV is based on 1 John uh, chapter 5, yeah. verse 4. Whoever's born of God overcomes. Mm. And this is the victory that yes. we have over the world is yes. our faith. Yes. And we focus on that last half. Victory over the world and everything it has to offer That's or dish right. out is our faith. And um, we're, we're building up in the most holy faith and, Amen. and keeping the main thing the main thing. That's right. Amen. That's Amen. good. Would you like to lead our viewers in prayer sure. and I'll close? Absolutely. Yeah. Father, yeah. we just thank you so much for this opportunity, an opportunity to just share what we're excited about, what we're passionate about, and that is the Lord Jesus. Thank you. And we just pray that you would just use uh, this time um, to, to touch hearts and to open eyes to how important Christian education really is. And really, Father, to see uh, a fire lit in the, this next generation that can take this culture back by storm. And not through anything except loving one another and seeing you transform hearts. So we pray to that end. We continue to serve you with that in mind. And we pray yes, that sir. in Christ Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. I thank you, Lord, that we can pray together. Touch and agree, you alone are God. You're awesome. You do have a plan and a purpose for each person. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the families that have entrusted their children here in the past, to the ones that are here now, and even future students. Yes. Um, we thank you for this year and, again, how you're pouring into us to pour into others. Mm -hmm. I just pray blessing over the school, the administration, yes. um, the finances, the donors, the many volunteers. Bless them, Lord, for sowing good seed. Mm -hmm. And um, we know that... Uh, Lord, you're giving wisdom because they've asked for it, yes. and uh, you've been leading, guiding, and directing. We just see that and acknowledge that and just can't say thank you enough for letting us be a part of what you're doing in all the earth. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, again, we have a few more interviews talking about ways you two can partner with Colorado Springs Christian School so you can answer the call. Keep watching. Celebrate what Jesus is doing throughout the nation and rise up to answer his call on your life. To serve the poor, heal the broken, free the captives, and bring joy to those in need. Find hope, encouragement, and motivation through Overcomers TV. This inspiring network features everyday people and ministries across America who are putting God's love in action. Tune in to Overcomers TV on your favorite app or streaming platform. It's time to overcome.